you, Madam General Evaluator, uh, my fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests, and of course, most especially Laura. Laura, thank you for yet another wonderful speech. I have to say, as somebody who's been a member of the club since you started, it's phenomenal to continue to see you progress. One thing that you asked me to look for this evening was in particular your use of filler words, and I I'm sure there were probably a few, we all do it, but I have to say there, it wasn't a distraction. So if you used filler words, I, I didn't hear them because I was so engaged with your story. And that's part of your purpose with this speech is to practice speech writing and to inspire your audience. And I take that also to mean engage. So I think one of the things you also did well is this was a very well-crafted speech in the context that you had four distinct points throughout your story. You had a clear introduction and a clear conclusion. Um, you started us by telling us about the bird's nest that developed. Then you gave us four different ways it taught you a lesson uh, and having the bird nest in your life and the birds. And then you finished with a strong conclusion about the different stages of life and, and how there's learning to be done throughout life. So I think uh, bravo on a structured speech. It's something that a lot of us, I think, don't do, or often it's easy to leave off the conclusion. And I like that you kind of looped back and, and brought it all together. Um, two th recommendations very briefly. One is I noticed uh, as you're sitting in that chair and it's um, uh, a chair on wheels that pivots, you were swaying back and forth as you spoke. And I'm, I'm on an exercise ball, so it's a little bit harder for me to do. Um, it's also a little bit more apparent because of the angle of your camera. So we're seeing more of your body. Um, so I would be mindful of swaying back and forth in your chair. It's something that I'm sure you're doing and not even noticing, but it, it kind of reads as if somebody was pacing or swaying back and forth and shifting their weight in real life. So be mindful of that because I think it might read as nervousness that you're not, um, that you don't feel. Uh, the other piece of feedback that I'll give you very briefly is that you may want to restrict the anecdotes you tell to then be able to tie to your speech title a little bit better. Um, your speech title was what birdwatching taught you about life, work, and design. And so I heard a lot of life lessons, but I didn't quite so much hear some of the ties to your work. And so maybe you might decide to stick with one anecdote about the second nest and what a surprise that was. And well, that tells us that we have to, as a designer, I have to be prepared with a plan B. And in my work life, I need to be flexible because things aren't always going to turn out the way I wanted them to. And in life, it means you got to go with the flow, right? So I think you could have um, gone from four anecdotes to maybe two and given us some better detail or changed the title of your speech. Um, finally, I want to applaud you, Laura. I thought your use of a polling question in the introduction was a terrific way to get our interest and our attention, but also help set up your, your topic, right? You then kind of know who in the audience is a bird watcher um, and who's not, and then that would help you tailor your speech. If we were a room full of bird watchers, you'd uh, probably give us a certain amount of detail or change the contents a little bit. So I think you did a really great job, and, I, and those, those two pieces of uh, two recommendations I think will take you from good to great. So thank you, Laura, Madam General Evaluator.